everybody. How's everyone doing? Good, thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Rudy, Rudy Arredondo. Uh, I've been bartending for 10 plus years now. Um, I primarily work in Los Angeles, but I've also worked in New York. Both places are very different from each other, which I like a lot. So I get to work in two different worlds. Uh, here in Los Angeles is going to be more of a fruit forward uh, type of cocktail scene, whereas in New York, it'll be more of a spirit forward cocktail scene. So it's really cool to just get to play with both worlds. Um, all right, so uh, I just wanted to make sure that everyone here is aware that uh, there are requirements to complete the certification, or at least with us at LBS, um, just to watch three of these lessons, three of these weekly lessons, and to submit a video of at least 30 seconds or more, uh, just pretty much explaining uh, what you've learned or just something that's interesting to you. Maybe you want to teach us how to make a cocktail uh, just to this link right here uh, that's in the chat. So you should copy, paste that someplace, um, keep it on you at all times. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> So today's lesson is going to be about uh, how to elevate our resume, how to make it look attractive to management. I used to uh, do, I was beverage director and also a bar manager at several locations. So um, I'm going off of not only just experience, but also stuff that I've heard from other bar managers as well. So a very big deal, or at least in my opinion, when it comes to a resume, is that you, you kind of want to have a photo of yourself on your resume. This takes away from just the, it just feels different having a paper in front of you and just reading out all the different things that you've done, all the skill sets that you have, and just reading it on a, on a simple piece of paper where if I have a paper with a face on it, then I know who, like, it just feels more personal this way. Um, in bartending, we kind of want to be that. We want to be more personal. We want to be charismatic, social, you know, so um, it's very good to have a photo just to make you feel like, oh, this is a human. Um, it also helps to be remembered. So if let's say I have this resume, I read through it, and then um, I want to request an interview, I'll have maybe like, I don't know, like six interviews in a day. And so having that one person come, I'll be like, oh, this is that person's resume. I remember this person because um, I've seen their face before. So it's, it's good to have that. It gives your resume personality, essentially. Okay, so make sure your photo is clear and it looks hospitable. Um, uh, just, you know, all that. A uh, smile goes a very long way. Um, it just does. Uh, clear lighting, don't be backlit. Um, in a lot of photos, there could be backlighting and that just does not help. Uh, you want it to be as clear as possible. Uh, another thing that you can do is have like a theme in the background of your photo. So having a theme of a bar is a very good idea too. Uh, like if you take professional photos, let's say you take a professional photo at your bar or just like during a shift, you just make yourself look good. You know, you, you know, you do your hair, makeup, whatever it is. And then you just take, have a friend take a photo of you at your bar. You can use this photo on your resume. Uh, just to kind of uh, reel it back a little bit for those of you who just uh, came in. Um, I'm talking about how having a photo on your resume can go a very long way. Uh, I know that when I was hiring some people, uh, having that photo was very, um, it gave your resume personality. It also makes me feel like I'm uh, looking at a person's skill set rather than just looking at a piece of paper. Um, so it also helps when you do go in for an interview, they had already seen your resume, they seen your face. So when you do come in, 
it just makes you more recognizable, which uh, is a plus. Okay, so um, yeah, so again, the the photos that you want to take, you want to make sure that they're clear, that you're not backlit, and um, yeah, pretty much. Do I have any questions about that so far? Also, by the way, um, for all of you, if you have any questions at all during this lecture, uh, go ahead and just type it out into the chat, and I'll be sure to get to that question as soon as possible. And it doesn't have to just be about resumes. It could be about cocktails. It could be about something that's just been bugging you that's, you know, bar-related as well. Okay. Um, so uh, you, can, you can have that. So uh, resume heading, right? So you have your photo either in the right or the left corner, and then you have your resume heading. Uh, the heading is basically summarizing you as a person, but summarizing you as a person in a way that would benefit the company. So you want to keep it very short, so about three sentences max. Um, an example of something that you want to put in, and this is just an example, uh, I would put maybe like, I am friendly, enthusiastic, uh, I'm friendly, enthusiastic, organized, and I excel at upselling. So. These are things that, you know, bars will be looking for. They want someone who is organized because it can, just having any little ounce of organization in a bar is very necessary. It is a chaotic place. So if you're able to, you know, mise en place, which is put everything back in its place, that, that helps with the chaos of the tornado that it is, that is a bar. Um, excelling at upselling, that's just something that will benefit both yourself and the owner. Um, if you upsell, you make your cocktails more expensive, then the percentage of tip that's going to be 20% keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's kind of uh, what we want to do. Um, being friendly is also very good. So hospitableness is what we're seeking after. Um, so yeah, that first line pretty much covered a lot of that. Um, so another example for a second sentence would be, I am a self-starter and have experience controlling inventory as well as working in a strong team. So controlling inventory, it's not something that you're going to have to be doing, but saying that you know how to control it is a very attractive thing as well, especially for management. There are going to be times that management won't be able to just, you know, see everything that's going on. There's so many different ingredients, so many different bottles. So it's going to be hard for them to do inventory on their own. So in a bar, we're kind of working as a team. Um, so being able to control inventory pretty much means that you're able to see, oh, we're getting low and communicate that with your management or your um, higher up, which would be like your um, bar lead okay um and then uh working with us with uh working in a strong team so being able to work with people that's what you're going to be and you know doing uh if you're working a day shift sometimes you're going to be on your own but if you're working an evening shift when it gets super chaotic on a weekend then you're going to be working with a lot of other people so um, at times, uh, depending on each bar, right? So there could be very different problems in every bar. One could be it's too uh, narrow of a space. So being able to work around that without getting frustrated, um, being able to just know how to fill uh, a role within that team is what's necessary as well. So um, yeah, these are things that we want to uh, see expressed in our headers or our summaries. And then for our third uh, sentence, an example could be, I am familiar with classic and modern cocktails and can learn procedures very quickly. So uh, having that confidence and knowing your classic cocktails is super important. Um, definitely specifically with, you know, uh, full bars, right? So full bar, a full restaurant bar, uh, those are going to want you to learn the classics as well as modern classics. Um, and then if you know how to learn all these procedures very quickly, that's also very important too. If you already know how to do prep, 
like cutting limes and doing all that stuff, that's also very nice to kind of mention on your resume, um, just because that, that helps. Any kind of experience like that helps. Okay. Um, there are sections like uh, key qualifications and responsibilities that you might want to add onto your resume, um, including things like uh, very hospitable is very good. Uh, another one could be, you know, created some fun mixed drinks based off of uh, custom requests, right? So adding something like that would also kind of uh, do good. And this doesn't necessarily have to be in a bar. I know a lot of us are just trying to get our foot in the door and actually, you know, be a part of a bar. So I used to host a lot uh, of parties. And at these parties, I would be making people drinks. Sometimes I'd go to parties and then I'd make people drinks. So kind of showing off like some sort of uh, creativity of yours as well. Because, um, um, for instance, you know, I went to a bar and I did not have any bar tools there, but everyone wanted, uh, you know, margaritas. And I know that in a margarita, it should be a shaken cocktail. It can't just be stirred or anything like that. It has to be shaken because of its acidity. So I use the Tupperware to essentially make people margaritas. Like you could use anything, right? So kind of showing off your problem solving skills in like, you know, a little in a little paragraph that also helps a lot. So, I mean, that's another, uh, you know, key qualification, I guess you could put. Um, an example would be uh, successfully managed to make multiple drinks without compromising quality. Uh, that's a very big theme that I see in a lot of bars these days. Uh, consistency is a very big deal. Okay, so mentioning anything about consistency, uh, like you feeling like that is a very important thing, that's going to be incredibly attractive. So that's definitely something that you want to add to your notes is uh, consistency is important to you. Okay, that means making cocktails the same every single time. That's what all owners want. That's what all management wants. And that's what you essentially want eventually as well, too. Uh, as you keep making these cocktails and they're good and they're consistent and they're, they don't change, uh, people will go to you. They will be, like, relying on you essentially. Oh, th that's the person that made me the margarita last time. That, that was insane. I'm going to that person. More money for you that way, too. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, being well aware of mise en place, so everything in its place. Uh, that's a very, very good one. Um, when you're at a bar and you're thinking a lot, uh, you grab a bottle, you pour, and then you leave the bottle on a table. That's typically what happens in the very beginning. Um, this is one of those reasons why a lot of bar management, a lot of bar owners don't want to hire beginners is because that alone will just disrupt the entire flow. Um, so getting used to Pouring and putting your, uh, you know, uh, bottles back, putting uh, your garnishes back, whatever it is, uh, is essential. So whenever you do practice, maybe doing your pours or just making cocktails, try to imagine yourself in a bar setting and having that going on. So mise en place, having everything in its place, uh, figuring out what works best for you, and then just working like that and then putting it all back in its place. Just have it as like a habit for you. Uh, mentioning this in your resume will be very helpful for the beginners. So just being well aware of mise en place. Okay. Um, will meticulously follow legal sanitation policies. Um, you know, I've only seen this once in one resume and it really stood out to me. So this is a very good uh, thing to have on your resume. Just uh, saying that you will meticulously follow legal sanitation policies. All right, that's that's wild to me. I Again, I've never seen that, but to me that's super attractive. That's something that I want to see um, as far as, you know, the responsibilities go. Yeah. Um, next we have uh, ensure a clean and organized bar, uh, properly prepare cocktails with proper technique, uh, saying something like this is very attractive too because it shows that you're along the lines of just knowing why we do what we do. So I like the proper technique and properly prepare cocktails uh, written out on one of those skills, on those uh, 
key qualifications and responsibilities section. All right, and then uh, can maintain regular clientele through professional and friendly service. Uh, that's a very solid one too. Um, that's something that most people will want is you to not only maintain regular clientele, but to kind of bring more business to the establishment. So um, I know that some people will add their Instagram or they'll add like, oh, I have, you know, so-and-so following, you know, all bar-based stuff. So that's something that people are doing. Um, eventually, that's something that we can do here too. Uh, but just base, just saying, like, I can maintain regular clientele um, through professional and friendly service. All right. Do I have any questions about those? Maybe we want me to repeat some of these. If not, then I will continue to our skills section of the resume. Okay. I'm going to continue to the skills section. The skills section, what we're looking for here uh, is just a bunch of random skills here and there, as long as it's all based off of hospitality. So uh, customer service is a very big one. If you have uh, done jobs like, you know, um, sales or anything that relates with customer service, just add customer service as your skill. Cash handling skills, I feel like not a lot of people put that down. Uh, but should be on there. So cash handling is very important under skills. Uh, dependability is very important as well. So uh, not being late, uh, just always being on time and not missing a shift. Um, if you're going to be late, always being able to communicate that you're going to be late. That's a very big deal. I know a lot of people don't do it sometimes. You know, um, social anxiety can be a thing, but you know, uh, that's something that we want to kind of push against a bit. Um, flexibility. Now, flexibility is a very big deal for a lot of places, uh, just because when you're not, this is this is solely based on a schedule scheduling. So if you don't say that you're flexible, if you have like a very, um, if you have a set schedule, that's going to make it very hard for uh, you know anyone to want to really hire. Uh, just depending on what they do, but um, they're always looking for flexibility since there's going to be so many different factors that play into, you know, working at a restaurant, bar, wherever it is, uh, you know, Valentine's Day, for instance, oh, by the way, happy Valentine's Day, everyone, um, you know, th this, it's a random day, but it's going to bring in a lot of clientele, there's going to be a lot of people going on dates, so uh, you want to know that you can depend on the employees that you have, you know, to be able to come in for a shift. Um, so flexibility is very important. Uh, so having an open schedule is super important. Okay, uh, physical endurance, stamina, and strength. Uh, that's something that, you know, being a bartender is just what we have to do. Um, the, the gigs can require a lot of stamina. I mean, you're going to be moving around a lot. You're going to be on your feet a lot. Uh, so if your work ethic is good and you can work like 12-hour days, I mean, you're pretty much set. You're pretty much uh, good, right? Um, not saying that all bars and not are, are going to be that way, but it's good to be prepared to uh, be capable of that. Adding skills, uh, for uh, adding hospitable to skills is very important. Um, on your skills section, you also want to put knowledge of something like, uh, knowledge of modern classics, knowledge of classic cocktails, knowledge of proper procedure of making a cocktail. Um, you want to add as much knowledge in there that you have, uh, great memory, super good because one, you can memorize cocktails Two, you can memorize guests names. Uh, which goes a long way uh, on maintaining our guests. So memory, r remembering their names, remembering their cocktail. I mean, it just it keeps going. So great memory is very, very helpful here. So it'll be a good skill to add to your skills. Flexibility. Oh, I put that twice. That's funny. All right, so let me take that off. Uh, teamwork is very good. Uh, we want, again, teamwork is very strong. Um, there's going to be lots of other occasions. Um, 
another example of teamwork is whenever someone has had too much to drink and one of your teammates had, you know, stop there, um, just are not going to give them more alcohol because, you know, that's law. Uh, so once they just cut them off, uh, they'll play the game of, you know, if mom or dad said no, then mom or dad will say yes, right? So uh, it's that you have to have this communication with your team just all the time. So teamwork is very important in many different occasions. Okay, yeah, this is a very strong one too. Um, composure during high pressure. So being able to be composed in a high pressure environment is super, super important. I look for people that, you know, have personality that are super excited and can just be that way consistently throughout their shift without, you know, without being compromised due to just the high pressures that a uh, bar can, can provide. So uh, pressures would be like, um, you know, maybe rude guests coming by and being rude to you or uh, just the POS receipt machine is just popping out a bunch of cocktails at once and you have to just make them in a timely manner. Uh, it can definitely put a lot of pressure on some people so it's good to know that you are able to endure that. Okay, adding communication, also very good. That kind of falls under the teamwork thing. Consistency, again, that's very important, um, especially to bar management. If you really like that, definitely mention it. Problem solver, again, that's also super awesome. It saves so much time, and it can also provide, you know, progress in, you know, the bar, just the way the bar works. That's that's something that we want to do. We, const we constantly would want to progress. All right, uh, meticulousness, that's also very good to add. Okay, awesome. So in another section, which is, you know, adding your experience with jobs, right? That, that can be kind of, com kind of confusing, uh, especially if this is your first time getting into a bar scene. You want to pretty much add any kind of job that's very similar to bartending. Um, similar uh, in a sense like, for instance, working at a grocery store, you're doing cash handling, you're talking to guests, you're talking to customers, right? So those kinds of things, uh, working long hours, um, you know, being able to carry a certain amounts, putting everything in its place, you know, so things like that would work in that situation. Uh, being a barista is a very, very great example. You know, um, that when you're making coffee drinks, uh, maybe you're well aware of how to use a shaker, you've used scales before, you know, those kinds of things. You want to add those on to your experiences. Um, even carpentry works because carpentry, you're working long hours, you're carrying things. So uh, find creative ways to relate your work history to what a bar will be. Okay. Um, this is just a, a tip that I want to um, give to you all is just to not be afraid to apply. Um, I know that, you know, I've definitely been afraid of applying to things that sounded a lot more complicated than they actually were in real life. Um, I remember seeing the things on Indeed that were like, wild you know they would be like I expect blah 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 and it was just incredibly overwhelming seeing it all listed out uh, but the reality was I applied went in and it wasn't as complicated as it was made out to be so uh, that's something to definitely think about is don't be afraid of applying to any of these and going in for an interview even if it feels like the qualifications aren't met okay just go for it um, you just never, you, you'll never know, right? So just do it. Um, cool. Um, cover letter. All right. That's, that's an interesting one. The cover letters are, they tend to be pretty optional, right? So in this industry, uh, I don't see a lot of cover letters, uh, unless I'm working at a place like Death & Co or, uh, these high-end bar places, but cover letters are just like, 
you know, a way to introduce yourself and everything. Um, it really does show your interest because essentially you're making an essay that is geared towards this specific location, right? So if there is a bar or restaurant and bar that you really truly want to work at, a cover letter is highly suggested. It does take time though. So, um, yeah, uh, just, it's a solid way to pretty much introduce yourself, introduce your interest in the place and just how exactly you will be an asset to their company. Um, yeah, this, uh, this portion of the resume is pretty much like a summary. Um, it's like your summary that we did the cover, uh, not the cover letter, sorry, the uh, resume heading. Uh, you can use that as a, I don't remember what it's called, but as a theme for each of your paragraphs, right? So um, if we go back to the heading, um, like for instance, I am friendly, enthusiastic, organized, and I excel at upselling. Uh, you can use that as your first paragraph theme and just pretty much explain all of those things in that first paragraph just to kind of make it easier for you. Um, so that's what I mean, just pretty much using the sentences, the three sentences that you use for your heading to theme out your paragraphs of the entire uh, essay. You want to keep it to three uh, short paragraphs um, while explaining your interests in that location specifically. Okay, um, yeah, if you're interested in that place, obviously, you know, do your research, uh, really get to know what their views are. Every, every company should have like a website or something and they'll have like, oh, this is our philosophy. This is about us. This is what we believe in, you know, so, uh, going on there and then really learning their philosophies and kind of relating it to yourself. That really helps too. Um, another thing that I really enjoy is when I'm looking through these, um, when I'm looking through these resumes, or sorry, not the resumes, uh, when I'm looking through these job ads uh, and looking for my job or looking for a job, uh, I tend to look at their requirements. So they will have key qualifications and responsibilities. You can take those and you can just select a few of them, select and then maybe change them up and then put them onto your resume. Um, and just look for ones that are really good and then those will help you just kind of beef out your resume and make it look professional and more geared towards you know bartending it's just because uh, they, they're normally going to be putting on what they want to look for so it's pretty cool to just go ahead and recycle those and kind of use that against them okay so now that we kind of got a good idea of how we want to pretty much make up our resume, uh, another thing is to kind of make these fun decisions on how to make yourself memorable. So having that photo, great. Going in person is pretty memorable as well. So going in person with a folder of your resume uh, is always a really good way to kind of show uh, not only your interests, but just how dedicated you are, right? So um, you want to go in pretty much dressed for the part, essentially. Um, so uh, dress well, of course, but kind of keep an eye on what they have as, a, as an outfit uh, or as their uniform, because that can help uh, a lot. It just kind of uh, gives the hiring manager uh, a glimpse of what you would look like working with them, right? Uh, I remember going into um, a place and I know that their uh, uniform is wearing a blue button up with, uh, you know, black slacks, you know, black shoes. So I went in with a dark blue button up and then a suit on top, uh, black and then black shoes, black pants and black shoes. So I just walk in uh, with that kind of uniform. It's very similar to what they have as a uniform. And um, I do believe that there's some sort of like sub, su like uh, subconscious, oh, this person's already hired or, oh, this person already looks like they work here, you know, sort of thing. So that's just a random little like 
psychology move, I guess you could say. Um, so definitely come in for, you know, just dropping off your resume. Uh, but before you go and drop off your resume, absolutely, you want to uh, submit an application online because uh, that's just what they're going to tell you right away. It's, oh, did you apply online and all this stuff. So you want to be able to say yes so that you look very prepared um, and you look very dedicated to work at whatever location uh, it is that you're at. So definitely apply online before you go to the location uh, and present yourself as so. Okay. Um, definitely come clean, make sure you're showered, brush your teeth, do the whole thing, do the whole nine yards. Uh, just look your best, essentially, when you, when you go. Okay, so um, at this point, it is 3.32 where I'm at. Um, let's take uh, like five minutes, so let's meet back at 37.
Okay. Cool. All right, looks like we're all back here. Um, this portion, this uh, our next half of our lesson here is going to be more about how to be a little bit more introspective with yourself and just look for a more, like just a well-suited job. Um, just so that, you know, uh, we have a better, just a better idea of how uh, this, this will all work out. Okay, uh, so there are different kinds of bars out there. Uh, so, you know, you could be looking at craft bars where people really are very meticulous and uh, take everything incredibly seriously. Um, there are dive bars, which is, you know, a lot more relaxed, um, a lot more casual. Uh, restaurant bars, um, those are, can be kind of corporate-ish. Um, there might be more limitations there. There might not be. Uh, lounges, uh, very... Uh, martini-esque, I guess. Uh, clubs, which are going to be a lot of high balls, a lot of not really balanced strengths, a lot of people just wanting to get the job done. Um, same goes with festivals and uh, catering, where they want you to have like a professional attitude. right? So there are different types of locations to work at. Um, so just kind of try to think about where it is that you feel like you would really fit in with uh, with these locations or these different types of bars. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and write them down just to have them there. Craft bars, craft bar number one. All right, so okay. dive bars are neighborhood bars. Restaurant bar really just depends on what their theme is. Okay. We got lounges, clubs, festivals, festivals, and then catering. Okay, cool. There are also other types of catering um, out there, so uh, that might be a really good uh, foot in the door type of uh, company to go with. Uh, so catering or event companies are really good for starting off. So um, I would say look for those. They typically will want a lot of bodies. So again, this is a really great way to kind of get your foot in the door. Um, this is a good way to get a lot of money in one sitting. But the only thing is it's not as consistent. Um, you could work like two, three days and go home with $1,200. But there might not be another event for a while so you would have to just wait until that event does come by but it is money and it is again a good way to get your foot in the door so um that's one way to to you know start this whole bartending journey for you um there are about like a couple of different people what are I have a question here. What are your thoughts on hotel bars? Okay, so hotel bars are great. Um, hotel bars, uh, they kind of tend to be more, I want to say more craft style uh, and lounge style. So that's where they typically go under. Um, hotel, bar, hotel bars used to be like the, the biggest place where uh, the biggest uh, biggest names in the industry would work, but things have changed. Uh, we might be going back to that soon, but we'll have to see. Um, working at a hotel bar, it can go either one of two ways. If the hotel doesn't have a lot of clientele, if they don't have a lot of people, then you could be saying really, really slow days where you know, you're alone with your thoughts, which is probably one of the worst things ever. Um, or you can see, you know, a really busy place, which is really awesome and time just flies. And then all of a sudden your work shifts over, you go home and then all of a sudden all your muscles are sore. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on hotel bars. They can go, they can go multiple ways there, but I do like them. I think that hotel bars are awesome. You learn a lot. It's kind of like a melting pot. You do have people that are traveling and will come down to the bar telling your story uh, tell them their story, and it's like, it's really fun. 
Okay, so um, from what I've seen, it looks like there is like a couple of different types of bartenders or a couple different types of people. Um, so there's the pu the the publishing bartender. So they're more of a pub style bar type. So they're more relaxed but focused on just you know the people. You want to create really good connections with people. You want to just be friendly with others. Um, you want things to be not so serious. You want it to be just super casual. You want someone to come in and be like, yo, can I get a ginger, uh, ginger whiskey, you know, and then just ginger ale whiskey, bam, just have a combo, you know, be really relaxed and chill. Uh, then there's the speed tender, which uh, tends to be about free pouring, um, just kind of just pumping out drinks like crazy. Uh, it can be really fun. This is more of a place of like, you know, clubs, uh, festivals, stuff where, you know, you're going to really need to just keep pumping out a bunch of cocktails. Um, so events, looking for those, you're going to see a lot of speed tending. Um, craft mixology, when you, you know, are very meticulous with all of your ingredients, which is something that we're starting to see a lot, um, even restaurants and bars. So uh, that's something that you might want to start really looking into. And then there's flair bartending, which is, you know, just all for show. So you want to maybe look really cool doing stuff. So that's flair. Um, and they do take their time with their cocktails. Uh, but you do, you can get extra tip just from making an AMF, just from doing a bunch of flair and it looks cool. The best place to start as a beginner would probably have to be event bartending. Um, again, they're always looking for a lot of people. So, it's a really great way to get hired pretty quickly. Um, and this would be for events uh, like, you know, rock shows or, you know, uh, EDM, just a bunch of different types of events like that. So I would try to look out for any kind of event companies and that would get your foot in the door for sure. Okay, uh, I do have like a gentle warning about what this job is about. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I do, I do want to be, uh, you know, transparent with everyone here about what this job is pretty much like. So, um, just as a good idea before getting started with all this. Um, so, uh, it's, it is a physically taxing job. You might want to, you know, invest in some, uh, insoles for your shoes. Uh, really good insoles. I feel like that's probably the biggest thing that's um, that has helped me a lot during my shifts because you are going to be standing a lot. You're going to be standing for long periods of time. Um, okay, let's see here. We got another question here. I work at a restaurant bar right now. What do you think about going forward in this industry? Um, going forward in this industry, uh, in what sense? Just uh, are you asking about? Uh, progressing in the industry of food and beverage or just beverage alone? So as that's getting answered, uh, it is a physically taxing job. Get those insoles, get some good shoes. Um, they will, there will be long hours, especially when you're doing events, they could either be like five hours, which is super awesome. Or they could turn into like 16 hours. So you're really looking at a long time of just working and just being on your feet. Uh, late nights can be difficult, especially if you, you know, um, have a family or are in a relationship. Uh, that can cause some strain because hours can conflict with each other. Um, if you have like a dog even, you know, or just a pet, uh, that can cause some, some strain as well. All right, I'm just going to I mean, honestly they're they're fine too. Um, you know, working at a it's it's very different. It just depends on yourself, right? So, at a restaurant bar, it could be uh different waves, you know, depending on, you know, when uh when people eat food, so you'll have different waves of of impact. Whereas a bar is pretty straightforward and has, you know, 
that kind of thing. So uh, going forward in a restaurant and bar will it, it can be very good being in management going forward in that sense. Uh, yeah, it can pay off pretty well. So um, I think I think it's a it's a it's a great idea to go forth with it. Um, but you know, I went to an, an arts middle school where they had a bunch of different arts and they, I remember going in at the very beginning and trying all different flavors. So even if I do think that it's a great idea, it might not be for, you know, for you as an individual person. Um, I do recommend right now when you're starting out just to start out trying all these things, maybe even visiting bars or visiting different, uh, you know, locations and then just kind of asking, you know, bartenders, we're all hospitable. We're all gonna, you know, answer any questions. So, uh, going and communicating with everyone, seeing how the job is, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, I would say, you know, it's a good job, but if there's something better for you, definitely seek it out. Okay. Um, hospitality or service is its own type of job. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, another thing is, you know, hospitality, um, just being in customer service, uh, it, it's its own type of job. Not a lot of people understand this type of job and it's, it can be very difficult, especially when things get tense. So that's something that you want to think about is something like being able to handle any kind of tense situation. Uh, so, uh, that's one thing to kind of worry about there, I guess. Or, yeah, uh, smiling helps a lot and listening to guests is even bigger. So that's another thing. If you know how to communicate with others, uh, it's very good. It works out. Okay. Um, looks like I also inserted a dark side of how to get hired with places. Uh, I don't advise it, but just, you know, I know that there are certain circumstances out there that, you know, you need to get hired, then there are some other methods that you can use. Again, I don't advise, but I will let you know. Um, on your resume, uh, you could look for a local bar that had recently closed. All right, so if there's a bar that closed recently in your area, you can use that to your advantage. Uh, you could say that you work there, um, it closed down, and you can use that as a way to have a work history at a bar. Um, uh, but yeah, so since it closed, you could say that you were there till you know the end of it, and then you went and sought out a different type of job. So just kind of manipulating and lying a little bit on your resume. Uh, but this is you know again, if you are in, if you really just want to get this job super bad. Um, using your friends as a reference is another one. Um, you know, just use your reference as uh, a friend just to put in a good word. Uh, just talk about hiring dates with them, like when you got hired and all that stuff and just kind of make sure that that got in there. Uh, being clear about your intentions. Um, so because you want to work at a bar, you want to make sure that you get comfortable behind a bar. So that's a, another tip for you is just really getting comfortable at w using your tools. Because if you're not comfortable using your tools, like we're all going to know that you never worked at a bar before. So get yourself um, situated with your tools. Uh, make sure that you know what you're doing with them. All right. Um, good advice on that too if uh, you need someone to you know um, you could look on some YouTube videos I know uh, Anders Erickson is a very great person to look into uh, their YouTube videos teach so much so well um, so I would I would definitely go to him and just check him out
The good thing is that you are taking these online courses, so that should kind of help you learn how to use all these tools. Like if you have someone coming over, if you have someone explaining it to you via uh, virtual, um, you do have someone to kind of explain how to use those tools. Um, a good idea is to also listen to maybe uh, Bartender at Large. This is a podcast, and this will literally just give you so much information that you know will help you learn more than most bartenders. So it's good to to have these resources. So yeah, a large company. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, try to get your foot in the door. Uh, be just be a bartender. If you go in as a bar back and you do really well, uh, you will be a bar back for a while, like a good while. So try to make sure to get the job as a bartender. If you can't, then that's that's fine. Um, uh, being a bar back is fine as well. It just takes some time to kind of move up unless they tell you otherwise. Okay. Um, awesome. Do we have any questions after that? Um, again, so if you do end up having questions, um, not just related to resumes or just anything related to bar industry, you can follow me at rudacious underscore. That's my Instagram handle. I'll follow you back. Um, but if you have any questions, you can ask me there as well. Um, if something randomly pops up and you want to know the answer, I will probably have an answer. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, that pretty much ends it for today. Um, I'll go ahead and go over a cocktail that is my favorite cocktail. It's a super simple cocktail. Um, it is called Division Bell. Okay, this is a riff off of the last word. This is a modern, or well, Division Bell is a modern classic, I guess, almost. But Division Bell uh, is a very simple cocktail that is all three quarters of an ounce. So three quarters of an ounce of mezcal. Three quarters of an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Three quarters of an ounce of Aperol. And three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Always remember to use freshly squeezed lime juice. Uh, everything else is not going to do the same. Uh, that's everything in this cocktail. It's just four ingredients. Mezcal, Luxardo, Maraschino, Liqueur, uh, Aperol, and freshly squeezed lime juice. Uh, this is a shaken cocktail. This is a shaken cocktail, uh, double strained into a chilled coupe garnish with grapefruit peel okay so uh, that's my favorite cocktail division bell super simple to make uh, definitely learn it try it if you're not a fan of mezcal I recommend trying this this is very refreshing yet with a mesquiteness to it um, very subtle mesquiteness to it so definitely give that a try uh, Thanks again for coming, and don't forget to um, add your 30-second response onto, let me go ahead and put the link on there again. Into that link right there. Awesome. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.